Hi everyone, welcome to the U.S. Open Health Desk presented to you by Mount Sinai. I'm your host, Shauna Ryan, and joining us today is Dr. Lisa Gallitz, System Chair of the Department of Orthopedics at the Mount Sinai Health System. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Shauna. So, shoulders, they do so much for tennis players. They power your serve, they help guide your hand through a swing, your arm through a swing, they support your backhand. We're going to talk about ways to keep shoulders healthy and free from injury, but I want to ask first, from a medical standpoint, why is this so important to keep your shoulders really safe? It's really important because the shoulder is built like a very big ball on a shallow socket. The reason that we're made that way is so that you can place your hand anywhere in space, so there's not a lot of bony constraint. The price that we pay for that is some instability, so it's the muscles around the shoulder that keep that ball centered on the socket, and when they're not working, it can lead to a lot of pain and disability. Which unfortunately a lot of people know about, I'm sure, uh, in the game of tennis because we use them so much. So what, in your opinion, is a great way to start strengthening the area? One thing to remember about strengthening your rotator cuff is that it's not a lot of heavy weight lifting. They're relatively small muscles compared to some of the larger muscles around your shoulder. So you need to exercise properly and it's generally low weight, high repetition exercises. So to isolate your rotator cuff, we use TheraBands, which are some resistance bands. That's a great way to start. What are some uh, specific exercises that you can use with these bands? Well, if they're very easy to use at home. You can attach them to a door jam or a cabinet that's stable. And you can do some external rotation exercises, just some gentle rotation exercises. That's how we isolate the rotator cuff mm -hmm. apart from the larger muscles about the shoulder. And once you begin to strengthen that area, what do you think about doing some weightlifting as well? That's really important in addition. So if you look at shoulder mo motion, about two-thirds comes from the shoulder joint itself and one-third comes from rotation of the shoulder blade or the scapula. So weightlifting helps strengthen those muscles that are attached to the shoulder blade so that you not only have intrinsic shoulder instability but strength of the shoulder blade as well. So it's a dual part system really to keep that healthy and strong in the area. Right. And you mentioned isolating your rotator cuff. How do you actually go about doing this and why is it so important? Well, there are, exercise, there are certain protocols that we follow, and again, the, there are many large muscles around your shoulder, and so when you're focusing on strengthening the rotator cuff, it's important to ha use the right technique mm -hmm. in order to really be working those muscles as opposed to the larger muscles. So again, it's a lot of rotation where your arm is at your side and you're just focusing on rotation in different planes of motion. What would you say to a tennis player who maybe starts to experience pain on the court and has trouble serving or even returning a ball? What would you say might be happening then? If it's happening all the time, then that's the time to seek medical advice. Mm -hmm. That player should see the, their physician and make sure that they're doing the exercises properly mm -hmm. and with the right frequency. And it's also important to be evaluated at that point to make sure that there isn't something more serious going on, such as a rotator cuff tear or another muscle strain that could be contributing to the pain. But would you say that often that you find in those cases that it is an overuse issue? It's something because a tennis player is using the, that shoulder so so much. Exactly. Most of the time it is an overuse issue and just some rest and proper exercises will take care of it. But if the pain persists and it continues to happen every time you get on the court, what would you say is the next step? Then I think you need to see a physician at that point and need to make sure that you're doing your exercises properly and also be evaluated to make sure that there's not something more serious going on like a tear or uh, another strain that's a problem. Oh, well, I can't thank you enough, Doctor, for coming around here today and giving us some great tips to keep us healthy and on the courts with strong shoulders. Thanks so much. Thanks, Shauna. And thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to check out usopen.org throughout the entire tournament for more tips from our experts from Mount Sinai. Until next time, I'm Shauna Ryan. We'll see you right here on the U.S. Open Health Desk presented to you by Mount Sinai.